A period of technological growth emerged after the Civil War and transformed American society with wide-ranging new innovation. However, it was the railroad industry that affected the economy like no other. Railroad construction dramatically increased after the Civil War. In fact, the United States went from having 35,000 miles of track in 1865 to over 193,000 miles of track by 1900. Railroads connected vast regions of the United States and allowed for the efficient transport of goods and increased communication, which served as the foundation for the country's infrastructure. The railroad expansion created geographic connections that spurred the creation of a national market. No longer were goods and products regional. Instead, mass production and distribution of items created larger corporations and enormous profits. The railroad companies were the biggest customers of the steel industry because thousands of miles of steel track were laid to connect all areas of the United States. To supply their biggest customers, steel producers developed cheap, efficient methods for the mass production of steel rails. These low-cost methods enabled more industries, beyond just railroads, to afford the steel company's products. Large steel corporations produced more steel than any other company in the world. Oil production in the late 19th century was also linked to the growing railroad industry. Drilling for oil in remote areas meant that the product had to be transported east for consumption as a fuel supply. The railroads made the transport possible from pipelines to the market. Owners of oil companies and railroads that transported the oil made vast fortunes during this period. Large consolidated companies were able to control prices, production and sales, and establish monopolies. There are several individuals from this era who are known for the monopolies they created. These include John D. Rockefeller, owner of Standard Oil, and Andrew Carnegie, owner of Carnegie Steel. Both Carnegie and Rockefeller controlled the entire production process, from resource to finished product, which included mining the raw materials, industrial production of steel, and transportation for both resources and finished products. The fortunes they amassed were often at the expense of small business owners, workers, and consumers. The infrastructure of the United States was changed over time by various inventions. Some of the most important inventions were influenced by the conduction of electric current that was realized in the 1830s. Transmitting electric current enabled instant communication with telegraph transmissions and later the telephone. In the 1870s, Thomas Edison changed American businesses and homes with the invention of the electric light bulb. The effects of technological advances forever changed how people lived and worked. These changes in communication followed the expansion of railroads and helped to better connect the quickly expanding West with the industrializing East. The transfer of information, resources, and marketable goods connected all regions of the United States. Telegraph communication was the first nationwide information transmitter. Samuel Morse invented the technology in 1832. The telegraph machine received coded messages across electric wires stretching over long distances. In 1876, Alexander Graham Bell further expanded on the telegraph's capability for instant communication. He invented the telephone, which allowed for voice-to-voice -voice communication over electric wires. Telephone conversations were more efficient than telegraphs, and true discussion between individuals in distant locations were made possible. Thomas Edison was one of the most famous and successful American inventors. One of Edison's most revolutionary inventions was the electric light bulb. Not only did this development allow factories to be lit and operate 24 hours a day, but the light bulb also illuminated buildings, streets, and neighborhoods across the United States. The light bulb was developed in the 1870s and quickly replaced the more dangerous and expensive lamp oils that burned for illumination. Between 1880 and 1920, over 20 million immigrants entered the United States. The two most famous immigrant processing centers were Ellis Island in New York and Angel Island in California. 
Ellis Island Immigrant Station, located in New York Harbor, was opened in 1892. By 1924, the station had processed 12 million immigrants. By some estimates, 40% of all Americans today can trace their port of entry back to Ellis Island. Upon arrival in New York Harbor, immigrants were transported from their ships by barges to the Immigrant Processing Center. These newcomers greatly affected the social as well as the economic and political landscape. Whether Asian on the West Coast or European on the East Coast, these new immigrants tended to settle in areas populated by people from their same country. They formed neighborhoods where immigrants spoke the same languages and worshiped in the same ways. The new immigrants did not appear to blend into American society in the way earlier immigrants had. Prior to the 1880s, the majority of immigrants to the United States came from Northern and Western Europe. During the colonial period, immigrants were overwhelmingly English, with smaller groups of Scots, Germans, and French settling in America. In the decades after the American Revolution, large groups of Irish and German immigrants arrived. After the Civil War, more Eastern and Southern Europeans immigrated to America through Ellis Island. Angel Island Immigrant Station was quite different from Ellis Island. Approximately one million Asian immigrants were processed at Angel Island between 1910 and 1940. There was strong resistance to Chinese immigrants in the late 1800s, which resulted in the passage of the Chinese Exclusion Act in 1882. On the West Coast, Chinese immigrants had been hired as workers to complete construction of the Transcontinental Railroad in the 1860s. They were discriminated against and taken advantage of by railroad companies. The Chinese workers were paid half of what European workers earned and were required to do the most dangerous jobs of blasting and laying rail ties over the treacherous terrain of the High Sierra Mountains. Once the railroad was complete, the hostility toward Chinese immigrants escalated. The impact of immigrants on American society was significant. Overcrowded cities led to increased problems with crime and disease. Increased demand for agricultural and industrial goods spurred economic growth. Low-wage labor was available to work in the growing American industrial economy. New cultural items, such as Italian opera, Polish polkas, Russian literature, kindergarten, and new foods, such as spaghetti, frankfurters, and hamburgers, became a part of the American culture and diet. The dominance of European influence is a reflection of greater acceptance of European immigrants, in contrast to Asian immigrants, during this time period. When Asian immigrants were largely excluded from labor markets in the 19th century, they started their own businesses. Many viewed the fast-growing immigrant population as dangerous to the American political system. Voting restrictions were used to prevent immigrants from voting. Many immigrants worked as unskilled laborers in mills and factories. Unskilled laborers were subject to low wages, long work days, no vacations, and unsafe workplaces. Because individual workers had little power to change the way an employer ran a business, Workers banded together in labor unions to demand better pay and working conditions. There was strength in numbers. Over time, labor unions grew significantly and influenced business operations. Union strategies included strikes, protests, and political influence. The American Federation of Labor, referred to as the AFL, is an example of one of the early labor unions in the United States that wielded significant power Originally, labor unions were organized for either skilled or unskilled workers. Each group had its own union. The unions relied on collective bargaining to obtain their demands. However, when employers refused to bargain, unions used direct action, such as labor strikes, to obtain concessions. The AFL was successful due to its sheer numbers. Over one million members by 1901, and four million members at the height of its power. The development of labor unions in the United States, including the AFL and others, brought more awareness to the growing division between business management and workers. The labor unions brought about a much greater awareness of the need for better worker management relations.